Welcome to the fourth section of Hands-on Continuous Integration and Automation with Jenkins. In this section, we are going to look at the concept of pipeline as code. We will also explore the syntax of a Jenkins file and use the pipeline plugin, as these are the tools to build pipelines in Jenkins. The practical part of this section is devoted to build a continuous delivery pipeline. Let's start by looking at pipeline as code. In this video, we will learn what pipeline as code means, how pipelines are implemented in Jenkins 2, and what are the benefits of using pipelines as opposed to standard Jenkins jobs. There is no practical part in this video, but we will soon put into practice what we learned here in the next videos of this section. Let's start with the concept of pipeline as code. When we talk about pipeline as code, we refer to a set of features which allow to define and combine job processes using code and to store this code under version control. In other words, Jenkins jobs and their configurations are defined as code instead of manual configuration by the Jenkins graphical user interface. This is particularly useful when the same job must be applied to multiple branches in Git or to multiple source repositories. The job is managed and executed in the same way except for the code upon which it is based. To give you an example, you may want to have a CI pipeline that automatically builds the code for each branch committed to Git. This allows to reduce manual creation and management of multiple Jenkins jobs. Just imagine how many jobs you will need to create if you were to run a job for each branch created by developers. Pipeline as code falls into the general concept of infrastructure as code that you might have heard before. The idea behind infrastructure as code is that IT infrastructure is managed and provisioned through code rather than manual configuration. The main benefit is that IT processes like provisioning a server or a database are fully automated and their configuration can be stored under version control and repeated on new machine. Here I'm giving you some examples of typical pipelines. In general, any process that combines multiple steps and dependencies between them can be considered as a candidate for a pipeline. As we mentioned before, you can build a CI pipeline working on multiple branches and repositories. Or you can implement a continuous delivery pipeline that deploys code to multiple environments testing, staging, and production. Another popular use of pipelines is to execute data processing. These are typically called ETL pipelines from the acronym Extract, Transform, and Load. A use case that is gaining popularity is an event-driven workflow where a pipeline is started based on an event. For example, a new image is uploaded by a user. Build promotion is another example that combines multiple stages such as build, test and generating artifacts and documentation to be promoted to a storage repository. Finally, any process requiring conditional processing and dependencies between steps is also a good candidate for a pipeline implementation. Here is a visual example taken from the Jenkins website of how a pipeline might look like. In particular, this is a CD pipeline that builds, tests and deploys code through multiple stages from development to production. Now, let's look at how pipelines are implemented in Jenkins. Before Jenkins 2, building a pipeline with Jenkins was a bit awkward and required multiple plugins and complex dependencies between jobs. Jenkins 2 introduced the pipeline plugin, previously known as Workflow, and several features making pipelines first-class citizens in Jenkins. In particular, pipelines are implemented through a Jenkins file that is typically stored at the root of your source control repository. We will cover Jenkins files in the next video. The Jenkins file is written using a domain-specific language based on Groovy, which is a scripting language for the Java Virtual Machine, JVM. Code written in Groovy could also be stored in libraries that can be shared across different pipelines. Finally, the whole pipeline can be visualized in real time using a stage view automatically generated from the Jenkins file. 
This is an example of stage view for a simple CD pipeline. This gives a high-level view of the process and I found this particularly useful for explaining to non-technical people what the pipeline is doing, at which stage it is, or where it broke. Which benefits do pipelines bring over standard Jenkins jobs? First, pipelines are expressed as code and can therefore be stored under version control like any other script. Their resilience is higher since they can survive a Jenkins restart and they can be rebuilt from a previous stage. Pipelines can also be paused and wait for a manual approval. This is useful if the business needs to give a go-ahead before a promotion or deployment to production. Pipelines are also very versatile and can support complex requirements like loops, conditional and matrix processing, and parallelization of jobs. They can also be extended via domain-specific language scripts and shared libraries written in Groovy. Finally, pipeline can be visualized for the benefit of both technical and non-technical people. This is the end of this video, where we describe the concept of pipeline as code and explain its benefits and general implementation in Jenkins 2.